Today we're talking about Iran, a country that, unsurprisingly, is pretty influenced by the Iran deal. You don't say. Equally unsurprisingly, after the US decided the Iran deal was about as valuable as a Facebook stock, Iranian leaders were not too pleased with this. This led our country into another Twitter war, in which each country threatened the other with consequences the likes of which few throughout history have ever suffered before. And judging from our experience with North Korea, that threat is of a meeting with Donald Trump. Iran is fighting back though. Iranian officials appear to have dismissed US President Donald Trump's rather spontaneous offer to meet. Now if that was it, well, we wouldn't be talking about it today. Two leaders will only communicate using angry tweets. Boy do I feel sorry for the next generation. Well I got to write papers on World War II and Vietnam, they'll be writing about the flame wars of 2018. It's like the cold war except less intelligence. Sir, a recent briefing from the CIA has revealed Kim Jong Un's intent to poke you. We've scrambled the planes. But something much bigger is happening right now. Iran's president is warning America will regret reimposing sanctions on his country. US President Donald Trump withdrew from the 2015 Iran nuclear deal in May. The first round of renewed punitive measures are now in effect and they cover the purchase of US dollars and trade in gold, metals and automobiles. Yeah, we're taking them down a notch by making sure they can't buy US dollars? Oh geez, is this another currency episode? Well, the complete list of banned transactions right now is any transaction with Iran involving dollars, gold, precious metals, aluminum, steel, commercial passenger aircraft, and coal. So that's specific. So if you look at US exports to Iran, we don't send them much of any of these actual things and hmm, I wonder why we aren't cutting them off from things we actually send to them. Oh, I see. 41% of our exports are soybeans. Yeah, that could be a problem. Darn you, China! Not buying our lousy agricultural products. In fact, if you look at our current exports to them and compare it with what we're sanctioning them against, well, this might be as damaging as refusing to sell absinthe to Mormons. Because most of this stuff just isn't big exports. Hmm, I wonder why Iran isn't buying their aluminum and steel from America. And, and the ability to produce uh, steel and aluminum domestically, uh, I do believe is a national security issue. And yeah, so Iran hasn't really been relying on their super good and trustworthy partners America in providing them these goods. At the same time, we're making brutal cuts to their exports by ending imports into the United States of Iranian carpets and pistachio nuts. Now, I had a joke about how insignificant these imports are, but Whoa! Persian carpets make up 52% of our imports? Well, apparently I've underestimated our love of Persian rugs. Not really sure what's up with the pistachios though. Maybe we just thought that we needed to add a second item so that our list was actually a list. And that was the most foreign sounding thing left. Anyways, that's the plan. And now we've broken it down, it might sound inconsequential. But it's not because of one of the items on that list. Uh, late last night, state media reported uh, that authorities have arrested a number of former central bank uh, officials, including the former vice governor in charge of foreign exchange last week. The head of the central bank, bank was arrested by authorities. In Gee, Ron, way to make it seem like you have your stuff together. On the eve of these sanctions, you arrest all of your central bankers. That's like benching your quarterback and coach seconds before the Super Bowl begins. So what is happening? Well, Iran's currency is doing terribly right now. A common saying in Iran is that the price of the real always gets worse, never better. Its value has dropped so much in recent months that many exchange companies have stopped selling foreign banknotes. That, that's really bad. Basically, the Iranian real is so bad that banks won't even exchange foreign currency for it. Because it is such a surefire bet to continue to depreciate that it's not worth holding on to. Basically, imagine if I offered to trade you my stocks in MoviePass for your stocks in Apple. Even if we use fair prices, it's clear that one of them is going up in value while the other might be worthless by the time I finish this sentence. So Iran's currency is in freefall, and it's really hurting their markets. What does this have to do with sanctions? 
Well, people in Iran want two things right now, foreign currency and gold. Basically anything that can hold its value for longer than it takes to refresh your account balance on your banking app. Their savings are disappearing, and their main currency, at some point, lost 60% of its value in a week, which leaves people not happy. This is why you see headlines like the Wall Street Journal saying, Iranians hold gold ahead of US sanctions. It's a gold rush over there, and this one's just as depressing as the American one. If you remember, and they cover the purchase of US dollars and trade in gold, metals, and automobiles. Oof. Well, that's unfortunate for Iranians. So what is the Iranian government doing about this? Well, the Fed chairman who got arrested had a plan, although considering his current legal situation, I think you can assume how that plan worked out. Basically, he wanted to pretend like nothing was happening with the currency slippage by saying that no matter what the market price, Iranian exchanges will trade their currency to the US dollar for the same rate. Clearly, that's going to work out just great. Just after this policy was put into place five months ago. On Wednesday, police arrested dozens of black market currency traders in downtown Tehran. The problem is that this, at its core, is a really dumb thing to do. Let's break this down on a few levels of theory. First, if you intentionally are buying items for more than they're worth, well, that's not a sustainable business model. The Iranian government was selling US dollars at a 50% loss at one point. So not a good plan. It would be like me telling you, I'll sell you a dollar for 50 cents. This leads to the question, why was anyone not transferring real for dollars? I mean, it's a screaming good deal. Well, because the government banned exchange houses from selling foreign currencies, and authorities arrested dozens for allegedly manipulating the rules for personal gain. And one of those authorities was the Fed guy we talked about getting arrested earlier in this episode. So you could buy the foreign currency at a fixed price, but it was illegal to sell it. Great. How did the foreign currency get out? Well, it was given to companies, and don't worry, they'd be the last to exploit people for profit. The central bank released a list of about 1,480 companies that received a combined hundreds of millions of euros at the bank's fixed rate, which was about half the black market rate. Well, trickle down economics happened and these foreign currencies were passed down to the poor. Remember how earlier I was buying 50 cents from you for a dollar? Well, imagine I'm doing that exclusively to you. So you turn around and sell that dollar to someone else for probably the value of a dollar, unless you're a terrible businessman. And all of that to improve the value of 50 cents. Some dealers on street corners were whispering, dollar, currency. Hey kid, you want to buy some ones? Let me tell you, I have the strongest currency on the market right now. Not that weak European stuff. This is your classic American green. To give you a good timeline, this solution was implemented on April 9th. In April, state media reported that Tehran imposed a fixed real to dollar exchange rate and stopped its supply of foreign currency. And thus began the downward slide of the real's real value. Because on May 8th, Iran's leaders are reacting with anger this morning to President Trump's decision to withdraw the U.S. from a landmark nuclear deal. Yeah, we were out of there so fast there was a Trump-shaped hole in the signing room. Then things just started falling apart domestically for Iran, and their currency continued to slip in value. So what happened? Well, with a significant portion of the Federal Reserve in jail, people decided Maybe this wasn't the best idea, and on August 5th, the newly appointed head of the central bank, which boy, I bet there was a lot of competition for that job, told State News, the central bank will allow the market to determine the rate of foreign exchange transactions. Don't worry though, when you're talking about letting the market determine prices on state TV, well, there's generally an asterisk. In this case, customers will have to show a compelling reason to buy dollars such as travel, medical or education expenses, and won't be able to get large amounts. The free market spoke though, and it loudly announced, Hey guys, this program was a mess, with the official currency debuting at about a, drum roll, 80,000 rials to the dollar, also known as half what the government was buying it for. So congratulations guys, you got your currency's value back up to the level it was when people were protesting how low it was. 
So what now? Because this is only mission accomplished if you're Bush in 2003. Well, they have one group they can turn to. Europe is devising a plan to sidestep U.S. sanctions and deliver to Iran economic benefits guaranteed in the nuclear deal. Europe? So what does Iran actually need? Well, Iran needs access to foreign currencies, and Washington is applying the full weight of the U.S. Federal Reserve to block efforts by Tehran's new central bank governor. For the most part, though, the U.S. doesn't have much to do because, well, Iran's currency is doing most of the work itself. Remember how, for the longest time, Iran was exchanging dollars and rials at an artificially low rate to make their currency seem like it was worth more. Well, when you do that, nobody's gonna give you dollars. They're only gonna buy dollars, which means you end up holding a ton of your own failing currency and handing out all of your foreign currency. Let's go back to our example. You'll give anyone a dollar for 50 cents, but you'll also give anyone 50 cents for a dollar. Any takers on that second part? Hey, where are you going? Well, their main focus for right now is stopping this rampant devaluing of their currency because it's killing them on imports. The price of one of America's best known exports is pretty much the same wherever you go. But in Iran, the falling value of the local currency, the rial, means what someone here might have paid for a smartphone last year has doubled. A thousand dollars in Iran now costs twice as much. So how do you save your currency from free falling? Well, use another currency in your reserves to buy some of your currency. Only problem, Iran doesn't have any foreign currency anymore. Okay, we can fix this, we can fix this. Buy other countries' currencies? Well, you can't buy foreign currency to purchase your currency because, well, that takes us back to where we started. So what to do, what to do? Well, you could try and withdraw 300 million euros from a German bank, that wouldn't hurt. Although goal line defense stepped in and stopped that one from happening. So where do you turn? Is it game over? Well, no. Can I get a ni hao? Well, China, the world's biggest oil importer, buys around 9 million barrels of oil every day. And it wants to use its own currency to price the world's most traded commodity. I think they might be able to get a pretty amazing deal out of this, especially since the rest of the world will start boycotting Iranian oil in November. 63% of Iran's exports are oil, and of that, a third goes to China, although that number is probably about to get a lot larger. Iranian traders have the option of trading in Chinese yuan-denominated crude oil futures, circumventing any restrictions on dollar-denominated trade and U.S. banks. So the conflict right now is, the U.S. is trying to ruin Iran's economy to the point where they have to come to the table and negotiate a better deal with us. That will include not interfering in other parts of the Middle East and destruction of their missile program. And not in the, we destroyed our missile program in Israel sort of way. Well, the Chinese are seizing the opportunity to get oil so cheap that the U.S. would probably have to democratize the entire Middle East to even come close to matching it. Thank you, and that's all I have to say about that. Hello, YouTube. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you want to support independent, non-partisan comedy news, remember to subscribe by clicking this floating logo to the right of my head, or do it the old-fashioned way by clicking the subscribe button below. Also, remember to give me a thumbs up, and as always, Thank you for watching.